Hey guys, Bold Chaos here for the Disrupt Gaming channel, and today we're going to be discussing five hidden secrets within Valorant that every pro player uses. This video is inspired by this comment I got on one of my earlier videos here on the Disrupt Gaming channel, where Fest of Duck said, maybe you guys can make a video geared towards higher ranked players and how to climb and get more into the nitty gritty of things. So Fest of Duck, and to anyone else who is looking forward to tips like these, this video is for you. But before we get into that, I'd like to quickly remind you guys that if you are new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button button and also turn on all post notifications to stay up to date with everything disrupt gaming related also if you like today's video if it helps you out make sure to drop a like and also if you have anything to say about me or the video make sure to leave a comment down below without further ado let's get started Before we get started with these tips, I just want to preface this by saying if you aren't a high ranked player, if you're not within that gold to diamond range like that comment suggested, these tips can still help you and can still benefit you in every way, shape and form. If you can implement these five tips into your play style, you will instantly see improvements in your gameplay. And sure enough, with improvements like that, you will see an improvement in your rank. But without any more delays, let's talk about these five tips. Now, the first tip I have for you guys is to go into your settings and under your general settings, you're going to want to turn off corpses now the reason you're going to want to do this is for two reasons actually the first one being corpses when you have them on it actually hinders your fps they offer no real benefit by having corpses on so you might as well just turn it off and it allows your computer to run the game a little bit smoother another benefit and this is very specific here for all of you sage players out there either if you're a sage main or you were forced to play sage because no one else on your team wanted to play sage having no corpses makes it a lot easier for you to res your teammates because once you get your ultimate ability there's a chance that there's a lot of dead bodies lying around and you have to figure out which ones are enemies and which ones are teammates however if you have corpses turned off it actually differentiates between the two using colors obviously the blue circles are your teammates and the red circles are enemies it just makes it easier for you if if there's a big pile of dead bodies in one spot of the map for you to pick between who is your teammate and who isn't your teammate in case you haven't noticed a lot of the pro players actually have the setting turned off again because it helps with their fps and if they're playing sage it helps them differentiate between the two bodies so that they can res the correct body now my next tip for you guys has to do with the bomb a lot of people aren't too sure of when they are able to defuse the bomb in time or if it's too late actually riot has implemented a visual cue for you to know if you are in fact too late in the defuse now you'll notice that these two white orbs pop up as the bomb is taking down what i've noticed is if you haven't started diffusing by the time this second orb right here flashes and it's already too late however if you are on the bomb diffusing already or if you or a teammate already got it to halfway you still have time to diffuse even if that second orb flashes and now of course it's going to be a little close and it depends on how much time has passed since that second orb has flashed but just keep a mental note that if you guys haven't started diffusing at all and you see those two white orbs surrounding the spike then it's too late and you better run this has saved me and my teammates multiple times in various different situations where we defused the bomb where we otherwise thought we didn't have enough time or we ran away in time where we otherwise would have tried to defuse the bomb. Now, unfortunately, there isn't any audio cues as far as I'm aware of in CSGO, a game that is frequently compared to Valorant. There's a setting where you can actually have music playing when there's 10 seconds left before the bomb explodes. In case you guys aren't aware, in Counter-Strike, you have 10 seconds to defuse the bomb, or if you buy a defuse kit, you have five seconds. So it's the same concept. If you haven't started defusing by the time you hear music, then it's too late. I personally wish Riot would implement something like this for Valorant where there is an audio cue as well because you're not always going to have eyes on the spike. But at the same time, at least there's some cues so we have some sort of idea of how much time we have before the bomb explodes. Speaking of the bomb, my next tip for you guys is the black hole. Now, you may have noticed that there's times where you think you're far away enough from the bomb where it explodes and you'll be safe. However, you are just within the radius of the blast and you end up dying. How can you tell if you're far away enough from the bomb so that you'll be safe? Well, actually, if you guys haven't noticed already, every time you make a noise, whether it's a footstep, you jump, you shoot, you swing your knife. This circle pops up around your character on the mini map that demonstrates the area of where you are making sound that is audible. However, this circle is also helpful in the fact that this circle can determine if you are far enough from the spike so that you won't take damage. If your circle of noise isn't touching the spike icon on your map, then you are safe. 
However, if you look at your mini map and you find that your area noise is touching the bomb, this is very helpful because obviously you don't want to die to the spike. You want to survive. So you have your gun for the next round. This is also helpful in case, say, there is a gun on site that you really want to pick up, but you didn't have time. You needed to run away. You can stay as close to the site as possible without dying. Then you can make your way back onto the site and hopefully make it back in time for you to pick up that gun that you were hoping for. The same thing with the visual cue, this map cue to tell you how far you are from the bomb and if it's good enough has helped me on countless occasions it's helped me in the situation where i explained where i wanted a gun on site i couldn't get it on the first time but after the bomb exploded i was close enough to the site where i could run back onto it and grab the gun my next tip for you guys is very helpful in a team situation as well and this is pinging the spike now, this is a very simple concept and i'm surprised not a lot of people actually do this at least where i'm at in the plat 3 diamond 1 rank but when you're on the attacking side and you plant the bomb and you run away from site because you don't want to stand directly on the spike, you may come across a situation where the defending team will smoke the bomb so that they can defuse it without being vulnerable in plain sight. Now, a lot of the times what would happen in those situations is now you have to guess where the spike is and you're just wildly spraying through that smoke, hoping you're hitting the enemies. However, what a lot of pro players have done that I've noticed and I've started to implement into my play style is that they'll actually ping the spike because they can see it on their mini map. That way you have a visual cue you on your screen to show you where exactly the spike is that way you have a better chance of lining up your crosshair so that you can pre-aim it if you want to check it or like i said if the enemy smoke the bomb and you can't visually see the enemy diffusing at least you have a good idea where the spike is now and you can aim according to the ping on your screen it sounds simple enough you would think a lot of people would just naturally do this where you can visually see where the spike is even if you can't visually see where the spike is but on countless occasions i'm screaming at my teammates hey guys can someone ping the spike so I know what I can shoot at and even then it takes them five seconds because they're fumbling around and then they finally ping it But then it's too late Then I tilt and then I get onto the mic and I tell you guys here at the disrupt gaming channel to ping the spike So that way if we ever get queued together, then you guys will know to ping the spike and my last tip for you guys And again, it's one of those concepts that are very very simple but yet you don't see it a lot until you get into the higher ranks and especially in pro play. This concept is trading kills. If you don't know what trading kills is, it's when your teammate enters into a gunfight and they lose the gunfight and you being a teammate in a nearby area will engage into that same gunfight with the same enemy and trade the kill. So in a sense, you're trading one death for one kill. Again, it sounds very simple and very basic. If an enemy shoots all of their bullets to kill your teammate, it is perfectly safe for you to enter into that gunfight now and kill the enemy while they're reloading or they're unaware or whatever the case may be. However, I bring this up again because I will have teammates who will watch me die and then wait for the enemy to reload, reposition, and then my teammates will peek and they will die themselves. So try and make a mental note. If you hear your teammate in a gunfight, you don't even have to wait for your teammates to either get the kill or die. During that gunfight, don't be afraid to swing out and start that gunfight with that same enemy too. Because the more people that join on your side increases your odds of getting the kill. I mean, think about it in the other person's shoes. What is a lot harder for you to win? A gunfight against one enemy or a gunfight against two enemies. Obviously, you wouldn't wanna fight two people at the same time. So likewise, why would you hide and make it so that the enemy only has to fight one person at a time? If you ever get a chance to spectate or watch a pro player stream or watch a Valorant tournament, take note of these five tips and see how these pro players have already mastered these skills, mastered these techniques, and use these five tips in their day-to-day -day games. I've said this before, but these are all pretty simple concepts that a lot of people already know. And heck, maybe some of you who are watching this video already knew all five of these concepts. However, I'm making a video about this because although I've noticed my competition getting better and my teammates are getting better, they still aren't implementing these five simple tips and hidden secrets that help them become better players in Valorant. There's countless times where I'll ask a teammate to ping a bomb and they have no idea what I'm talking about. I have countless teammates think they're far away from the bomb and yet they die to the explosion or they're trying to defuse when they clearly don't have enough time. Or I'll have a sage stare at a bunch of dead enemies and try and revive them without realizing that, hey, those are dead enemies. Now, obviously, as you rank up higher and higher, once you become one of the best of the best, you're going to play with kids who are also the best of the best. So they will 
automatically do all of these things i'm just making this video because of my personal experience at my personal rank and i'm sure if you guys are around the same rank as me or maybe if you have already exceeded my rank but you remember your times when you were my rank of a plat three slash diamond one then you know exactly what i'm talking about regardless i hope these five tips help you out if they do again make sure you guys drop a like on today's video and subscribe to this channel if you're brand new around here leave a comment down below let me know what you guys think about these tips all support on this channel is greatly appreciated it helps us grow here at the disrupt gaming channel again i hope you guys enjoyed but i gotta get going for now all i gotta say now is stay safe out there and remember every day above ground is a good day